wait a minute, there's a flag on the play, so hold the phone. When we look at a lot of fasting studies, we find that most of them look at longer term fasts, long duration fasts, 24 hours, 36 hours, 48 hours, 72 hours. But what about shorter term fasts? We're talking about the shorter term fasts that are applied in intermittent fasting, which we're always talking about. And a lot of you know me as the intermittent fasting guy, so let's truly talk about intermittent fasting. And let's talk about some of the research that's now coming out as intermittent fasting gains popularity. We're talking about the intermittent fasting that's 16 hours of fasting and eight hours of eating on a more frequent basis versus longer term fasts on an infrequent basis. So I'm gonna give you two really awesome modern studies that are looking at this because the studies are really starting to go that way since it's gaining so much popularity. So we have to look at it. Now, first and foremost, if you haven't already, please, please, please hit that subscribe button and make sure you turn on notifications so you can see whenever I post videos. I post videos big and small, ranging from complex topics down to basic topics that you can share with your friends and family. So let's get to it. This first study was really interesting. It took a look at a 16-hour fasting period and an eight-hour eating period of time-restricted eating, also known as intermittent fasting. And the whole goal of this process, the whole goal of this study, which was published in the journal Translational Medicine, was to take a look at the body response in terms of the metabolic response, in terms of body composition, in terms of maximum strength, in terms of lipid profile, and in terms of inflammation. So they really wanted to take a well-rounded look at individuals and what happened after they would go through a shorter fast versus being on a traditional three square meals a day, kind of just eating throughout the day diet. So what they did is they took 34 men. They divided these men into two groups. They divided them into a group that, of course, did a 16-hour fast and an eight-hour eating window where they ate at 1 p.m., at 4 p.m., and at 8 p.m. every day for eight weeks. And then they took the other half of the group and they put them into a traditional eating pattern where they ate at 8 a.m., 1 p.m., and 8 p.m. for that same period of eight weeks. Now they had them literally eat the exact same amount of calories they had them eat the exact same macronutrient breakdown. And they even had them train the exact same way. You see, both of these groups, they took men that had had five years of resistance training experience. That way, muscle density, muscle maturity, training intensity was all roughly the same. And when they put them through any of their workouts, they had them supervised. So they had them supervised so that the intensity was the exact same. So both groups did three times per week resistance training in the six to eight repetition range doing compound movements, which means they did things like bench press, they did things like squat, like leg press, the exact same workouts between the two. That's all that matters. The other thing that was interesting is that they had both of these groups train between 4 p.m. and 6 p.m. So they even had the time of day that they trained down to a science. They were like, nope, you're only gonna train during this time, that way we keep this totally controlled and unbiased. Well, get ready for the results, because this is fascinating. After consuming the same amount of calories, but just in different periods of time, intermittent fasting versus not intermittent fasting, they ended up finding that the intermittent fasting group had a 16% reduction in body fat versus a 2.8% body fat reduction in the traditional eating group. Pretty darn amazing right then and there. Then they looked at muscle mass. They found that there was no change in muscle mass. In fact, there was even a slight increase in muscle mass in both groups. They found that there was no change in maximal strength. In fact, they found small instances of increases in strength in both groups. Then they took a look at their lipids. No change in the lipids between both groups with the exception of the fasting group having lower triglycerides. Then we get to the sciencey stuff. They had a big change in inflammation levels when we took a look at the fasting group. The fasting group had a massive reduction of what is called tumor necrosis factor one alpha, which is a major inflammatory modulator within the body. They also had a huge reduction in what's called interleukin one. Interleukin one is a cytokine that's going to trigger more inflammation within the body. So not only did we have a change in body fat, but we also had the body stimulating recovery in a very healthy way. So again, just by changing the eating window down to an eight hour period of time. So this study alone tells us a lot about the body composition, it tells us that sure, by shrinking that eating window and by consolidating it, you can allow the body a chance to use its own stored fat for fuel, which is exactly what we're promoting in the world of intermittent fasting, exactly what we're touting from a body composition side. But there's another study that takes a look at some different things. And this is a little bit more psychological, but it's also interesting in terms of practicality. So let's look at this study. This study took a look at an eight hour eating window again, but this time, with obese and overweight individuals. And this was a 12-week study. What they wanted to do with this study was they wanted to look at how it compared to an older study that looked at alternate day fasting. So what we are comparing here is a short-term fast that's happening frequently 
versus alternate day fasting, where people would eat whatever they want for a full day and then fast for a full day. Eat whatever they want for a full day and then fast for a full day. That was the old study. So what they had these subjects do with this study is they had them eat during an eight hour window, 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. every day. And they told these individuals, you can eat whatever you want. So they ate whatever they want and however much they wanted to from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. for 12 weeks. So then what they did at the end of the 12 weeks is they compared the results to the historical data that they had from the alternate day fasting study years ago. Okay. So what they found was that in this intermittent fasting group, they ended up consuming approximately 350 less calories than the older group did. They also found that there was a significant change in their overall body weight reduction. But a lot of this ended up coming to be simply because they were able to maintain it for the period of time that we were set out to do. So with the alternating day fasting program, although it was effective, they found a lot of people dropped out and couldn't stick to it. But with intermittent fasting over a 16 hour fasting window and eight hour eating window, subjects were able to stick to the program and ultimately yield a better response in their bodies. Now the data from the older study show that there was a very high attrition rate. A lot of people dropped out of that study. Whereas the 16-8 study, not a lot of people dropped out. In fact, most of the people completed it. So what this proves is that when you're coming down to a lifestyle, you probably will get a better response, at least on your body composition, from a little bit more frequent fasting, maybe not every single day, but doing shorter fasts where you can handle it. Then as you develop the fortitude and the strength to go with longer fasts, then you can extend it. And then you can get a little bit more extreme and have even better results. So what is the takeaway from this? I mean, aside from just touting the benefits and promoting intermittent fasting and giving you a video that you can share with your friends and family, I think what we're finding from this video and what you're probably gonna learn is that you need to test out the waters for yourself and start with these shorter fasts and work your way up. So finding that balance in between. So maybe fast for three or four days per week, utilizing that 16-8 fasting to eating window to get your body adjusted. That's perhaps the best way that you can go long, long term and still have amazing results. So as always, if you want to know more science, if you want more research, if you want more of these peer-reviewed scholarly articles put out in video form, I'm happy to do that so that you can be totally positive that you're on the right track to getting in the best possible shape. So as always, keep it locked in here on my channel, and if you have ideas for any other videos, just put them down in the comment section below. We'll see you soon.